Well, this video describes a walk that circles around the village of Studley in Wiltshire. It's a video that may help you decide whether to do a particular walk, but it's probably not very useful as a guide when you're actually doing the walking. So if you do want to do it, then you might go to this web page where the route I'm going to outline now can be maybe printed on paper or perhaps followed on a smartphone. Studley is just north of the village of Derry Hill. And if you come here by car, then you should find parking in that village quite easy. For instance, um, in, in these streets marked here. Well, let's have a look at this suggested route circling around this village. It's quite short, three to four miles. It's fairly flat and there are no stiles or otherwise difficult areas. Some of the lanes are a little narrow, but there's very little traffic on them. The route is shown in outline on the left and on the right is an indication of the countryside you'd walk through. To help you decide if it's a walk that suits you, I'll just step through the route on this blank map, trying to illustrate what it feels like. So walking up residential Studley Lane is a quiet start to the walk. And then the first choice point is signed here, where you should bear right onto Norley Lane. Shortly afterwards, there is a junction where you should bear left. Then you're on a lane that is quite narrow. Perhaps it's not suited to larger groups of walkers, but traffic is unlikely. And so it's still quite a walkable part of this route, I think. Now, here's a point where you leave that lane and drop down onto a track that runs underneath where you've been walking. And I think this aerial view demonstrates what's required. You drop down here and then onto a track that runs underneath where you've been walking. And that move places you on uh, what is actually a short section of the National Cycle Network although we didn't actually meet any cyclists on this occasion. In my view, this is the most agreeable and the most interesting part of the, part of the walk. It, it, it offers a clear path through a really pleasantly wooded area. And then um, towards the end of this section, you're in what is, um, I suppose, the most historically interesting part of this whole vicinity. Although Studley may seem just a small and typically modern village, actually Studley has a long history as a settlement. So the area marked to your right on this path in the oval was once the site of Studley Manor, land for which records stretch back at least to the 13th century. And there was a manor house here, but only from the 18th century when it was occupied by the Hungerford family, a very distinguished Wiltshire family. However, the house burnt down um, although it is reckoned that the present Studley House Farm, which is shown in this picture, was built from the resulting rubble. The farm is just out of sight at this point, but what you do see in this picture is the location of what was once a substantial monastery, a monastery named Stanley Abbey, a Cistercian community established in 1151, and active until the dissolution of the monasteries in 1536. So it sat between where you would be now on this walk and the River Marden to the north. Here is a footprint. Uh, you can see that the Marden at the top, while this large monastic community would have stretched down quite close to where you're standing at this point. So after you've given that some thought, uh, walk on to this junction here with the road that is Studley Hill. Now, um, this aerial photograph shows where you're coming from and identifies for us a couple of interesting features. Well, it's quite often the case that uh, shapes or patterns in the landscape may not be so visible at ground level, but we can reveal the existence of features that were 
perhaps significant in earlier times by taking an aerial view. And in this case, the run of wooded area indicated by the blue line marks the site where once ran the Wiltshire and Berkshire Canal. On this map, the arrow shows where you are standing at this point with the canal heading towards the junction with the branch to Carn and then onwards north. If you were brave enough to beat a path north through the undergrowth here, you would come across the remains of the Stanley Aqueduct, which carried the canal over the River Marden. But sadly, it, it, it was the, the collapse of this structure that played a significant part in the general closure of the Wilson Berkshire Canal. Now, um, this red arrow also marks and highlights another historical feature. In fact, it's one based on the very path that you've been walking along um, this point up to this point in the walk. So although it's now a cycle path, it was once the route of a railway line linking Khan to Chippenham. This was a line largely made necessary by the incapacity of the canal to carry the growing volume of cargo out of Khan, particularly the large output of Khan's pork and bacon trade. So if you were to follow this path a little further north, the path that you were on, you would reach the site, but only the site, it no longer exists, but the site of the small station that was once Stanley Bridge Halt. And if you went further south um, on our present route, you would find perhaps a remnant of the second station on this branch line, namely Black Dog Halt. Curiously, this was created as a private stop, the one for Lord Lansdowne's family on the Bowood estate nearby. Indeed, his lordship had a special compartment constructed in the train, one that served um, him and his family, although the line was ultimately closed in 1965. Well, your route now becomes a long stretch of unmarked road. Again, there should be very little traffic, but there are generous verges for walking on if any passing vehicle does come your way. Eventually, you reach some Studley Village housing and you should look out for this right turn that is marked footpath. In fact, it is a lane, uh, but one that leads to a footpath uh, that you finally pick up veering to the left as is shown here. The remainder of this route is along a field path that leads back to the main road where you can cross and then head back to your starting point. Well, there are no um, refreshments or pubs, cafes on this route. However, if you head um, a little south in the direction shown by this arrow, you do enter the Bowood Estate. Um, indeed, if you want a second short walk, then this web page offers you uh, one that's based upon that estate. It does have a quite pleasant uh, cafe, and if you want to use it, you don't actually have to pay the admission to go into the estate itself, so you might consider that. Well, hopefully both of the pages now shown here will help you further in taking on these two interesting routes, and indeed, um, there are many other routes on this website that um, may also serve you for that purpose. So have a look.